What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. This is the Memphis League Challenge round number four. On well, left, we have Taylor playing her uh, Greninja deck, and we see once again that she does Mulligan like she did in round number three. Uh, but on the right, we have Brandon, and Brandon has been known to play Evasol like crazy, as you do see. He does have the Dark Energies in his hand so it's going to be a greninja versus evatol aka the best two decks in standard format and uh let's see what's going to happen will greninja take it or will evatol take this lead challenge all right guys so taylor's going to find it oh she has multiple tile flames she has two in her hand but she can only put one in the axe spot unfortunately uh brandon's going to take a mulligan draw all right so three pokemon are going to come down and let's see what is going to happen she must have a froki as well or maybe, I think she played Jirachi, if I remember correctly. I think she flipped over one of her prize cards in game number three. Uh, so we'll see what's going to happen, guys. Do you want to see Evosol win this lead challenge, or do you want to see Greninja take it instead? Uh, Taylor does have a Star Wars shirt on, so I might have to go with Taylor, but Brandon does have a golf shirt. So if you're a fan of golf, maybe you're cheering for Brandon. Here's the handshake, and let's see. Oh, oh, oh they faked me out. I thought they'd start playing, but they're not going to start playing just yet. Just gonna wait here a second and uh who's gonna take it, Taylor or Brandon? That is the big question right now. <clears throat> so uh just waiting for these players to uh start this match and uh yeah, but guys hopefully you have enjoyed this elite challenge. Um we have four more rounds of League Challenge for the uh, day after this, and then we start League Cups, uh which should be exciting as well. Uh so <clears throat> Just waiting for them to start. I guess I should have looked ahead in time and uh, see when they started. Hopefully it's not too long. Uh, but if you have any recommendations for these videos, let me know. And we see that they do start off. And Taylor's going to start with the Tile Flame and Froakie. While Brandon's going to start with that E of a Tall. Alright, so Taylor has an Ultra Ball. Can discard the Tile Flame? It's pretty much useless. And then maybe... Oh, man. It's so weird with her hand because she has no supporter cards. But she's a Trainer's Mill Water and a Greninja. Alright, so she looks like she might discard the Ultra Ball uh, to get maybe, uh, probably another Froki, just in case her other Froki does get knocked out. And she's probably going to hold on to that Water Energy, because what she could do is not go for the Water Duplicates, and instead go for an Arrow Blitz to search for any two cards out of her deck, and get set up that way uh, to guarantee her supporter card the following turn. So I imagine with this, we will see a Froakie come out and play. Taylor's just going to see what's all prize, how many Frogadiers are in there, how many Burst of Balloons, all that good stuff. So Froakie will come down to the field, and uh, we're going to see what is going to happen. Now to Brandon's turn, if he can get some crazy, like, Max Elixir, DCE, Escape Rope, Knockout of Froakie, he'll have a really strong turn one. That's what he really needs to do. And uh, we might see pass. Yep, pass on the Brandon's turn. We see he has a Shaman fighting Fear Belt onto the active. He does have a Dark Energy, a Sycamore, and a bunch of stuff. Uh, looks like he might just Sycamore his hand away. Dark Energy to the active. It's Sycamore discarding three Darks, a Zorg, and a Shaman. So he does play the Zorg with the Mind Jack, which does 10 plus 30 for each bench poke on your opponent's side of the field. And that could be bad for Taylor since she has to fill her bench up with all these Frogadiers and, and all that kind of stuff. So see Zora coming down. And he does have a DC, so he could Mind Jack next turn. He can Eve Ball next turn. He has a bunch of options. And we'll probably see a pass on to Taylor. And Taylor has the Water Energy, so she can lease Arrow Bloods to get any two cards out of her deck. Now, Brandon does have the Max Luxor, which is really not that relevant on the Zora. He wants to say that's for Zark. And, oh, she top next to Greninja. I mean, the Frog of Deer. So put down the Frog of Deer. Uh, Trainer's Mail. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Oh, no, there's nothing in her hand. She could have waited to use the Trainer's Mall after she water duplicates just to get more Frogadiers out of her deck uh, to have like a least likely option to draw into them. But if I'm Taylor, I might actually attach a water duplicate to the active and use Arrow Blitz to get 82 cards out of my deck and not actually go for water duplicates. And no, she's going to change to the Frogadier, but as you see, that's her only water energy. So water duplicate the active and we'll see water duplicates. So I'm going to get three Frogadiers out. So there's one. Uh. Let's see how many prize two, and the third one looks like it is prized, unfortunately. Yep, so just two Frogadiers. She did prize a Frogadier again like she did a game number one, uh, but game number one wasn't too bad. 
We're not getting in one round, there were three, sorry. Uh, so yeah, just two Frogadiers, and Brandon's going to be in a dominant position. He has a DC, he can attach to the active, and just start airballing, or even balling for a knockout, not airball, evil ball. Uh, so on the Brandon's turn, he's got a Flushed for Azora, he's got a Zoroark, he's got a DCE on that Zoroark as well, okay? So he can stand in Mind Jack for 3, 6, 9, 12, 130 damage. And things, oh, and he has a Max Luxor as well, so he can Max Luxor to this bench, even all. Does he find a Dark Energy or not? There's six cards in his hand, and he will put a Dark Energy on that bench, even all Yaks, and... If you're looking at Taylor's hand, you're, you, you're not going to be too happy. Now, she does have a Greninja. I think that is the uh, Moonlight Slash one, so that's good. It's not the Aqua Shower one, which we know she does play. All right, so Brandon's going to get a good shuffle here. Um, but next turn, if he finds a DC for the Avatar, he can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Only 110, which doesn't knock out a Greninja. I mean, a... a yeah, it does not got a Greninja. We see Sycamore discarding his hand, draw seven new cards. Can he find another Max Luxor? Or not is the big question. If he does, then he can knock out the active with a, or knock out a Greninja with a DCE. So we will see a Max Luxor. I do see one in his hand. And I think the plan is you just load up one Johnny Evadol and you just swing knockouts constantly. All these Greninjas. Uh, we do see a Max Luxor. Can he find a Dark Energy or not? One, two, three, four, five. Six, and it looks like he did with it. He did discard a bunch already with both those Sycamores. So I think both of them at least discarded three Dark Energies, which is not what you want to do when you're playing Dark. You want to keep those in your deck as, as long as you can. And, uh, was well, he a Mind Jack for Knockout for sure? <laughs> but Taylor's hand is just a Greninja and a VS Seeker, unfortunately. All right, so, uh, let's see. We might, oh, Eva Tall X coming down as well. He does have an Ultra Ball, but I don't know what he'd be digging for. Maybe a Trubbish, but I doubt he plays Trubbish because he does play the Zork instead. So, let's see what Brandon decides to get out here. There's an Ultra Ball discarding a Dark and a Delinquent. Maybe grabbing another Zora. Maybe grabbing a Shaman to help set up. And yeah, he is going to go for the Shaman, set up for some new cards. It doesn't really matter too much what Pokemon he puts down because they really can't be a Lysander stall because he does have the Zork uh, with the Mind Jack, I mean, uh, with the Standard ability. Unless Taylor does go for a Shadow Stitching, which then shuts it down. But if they Shadow Stitch, then she's only doing 40, which is not too much of a big deal. And here we see Shaman instead of four. There's a Fighting Three Belt, Ninja Boy, Dark Energy, and another Max Luxor. So will this Max Luxor hit or not? And if he does, where is the energy going to go? Like I said, I think it goes on the Evotol with the two energies. You just try to load up that guy. Take a knockout that way. There's three, four, five, and six. And oh no, another whiff on the Max Luxor. Oh, that's not good for Brandon. So he's one for three right now on Max Luxors. But you kind of expect that. He has a bunch of dark energies in his discard pile. He has a couple on his hands. So it's not going too hot with these dark energies. And we're going to see a Mind Jack for knockout. And on to Taylor's turn. Can she top deck an energy? Uh, a supporter card, an in. And there's a super rod, which is what she does not want to see. Greninja, super rod, shuffle back in the Froakie, uh, Frog Greninja, and a water energy. I, I might have held on to the super rod. Um, just in case you top deck a fisherman, which we know she plays. And that's what she looks like. Yeah, she's actually going to yeah, shuffle the Town Flame instead, which I think is fine. She does play that Super Rod. Oh, no, nope, never mind. She'll put the Water G in there. I was going to say, she plays Fisherman, I, so she can get back the Water G and then use Arrow Blitz to gain two cards out of her deck. Oh, no, nope, there's Town Flame. All right. I think the Town Flame in there is a little bit better. Uh, like I said, she can't Fisherman or Energy Retrieval for it later on, and then use Arrow Blitz to gain two cards out of her deck. But now she's in an interesting spot. Does she leave Town Flame with the Axe spot? Or does she retreat to Froki? If she leaves a Talon Flame in the Axe spot, Brandon could take a knock on it and make it where Taylor does not have any way to get her supporter cards or Ultra Balls or Pokemon, anything like that. All right. And uh, we'll see a pass from Taylor, but who does she let take a hit? Uh, does she let Greninja? Uh, no, she lets just keep the uh, Talon Flame in the Axe spot. And Brandon does have like a Lysander. Now, Brandon... Could go after the Frogadier this turn. Like, license the Frogadier, put a Dark Energy on the bench, even with all yucks, and mind jack the Frogadier for knockout. Uh, just trying to get one of the frogs off the field. Uh, I think that's a good play for sure. You can't knock out the Greninja, but might as well take a knockout of one of the frogs while you can. And yeah, I think if you're Brandon, you license the Frogadier. And the next turn, swing with the Evil Tall Yax and take a knockout on uh, the Tile Flame or whoever you want to. So Greninja, a Frogadier coming up. We'll see a Mind Jack for knockout. 
A uh, Brandon will go down to four prize cards, and can Taylor find a supporter card? Greninja being sent up, it does have that free retreat. Uh, she top ducks and ends. So there we go. That's what Taylor needed. So Brandon will go down to four prize cards, while Taylor gets six. But she has a Frog of Deer in the discard pile. She has one Greninja in the active spot. She has a Talon Flame and Froakie. Now she did put a Frog of Deer back in her deck, but essentially she's going to only have two Greninjas this game unless she plays a second Super Rod uh, to get the other ones back. All right, so both players are going to shuffle up here, and if Brandon finds a DC one, two, three, four, five, six, he can do a hundred and thirty to this Greninja. Uh, Taylor did find a Greninja break, uh, a burst balloon on the active, um, but if I'm Brandon, I might just pass maybe license the froki if i have that option as well uh taylor's hand is just two in a town flame and a greninja all right so the hand's not that very good do you leave the greninja up in the x spot and let it take a hit or not is a big question if she is going to uh, just pass with the town with a greninja break in the act spot we see brandon put down another another evil tall x he's gonna play super ride show him back in those dark energies there's a bunch in there there's two and there's a third energy go back into his deck and does he find a, uh, a DCE, maybe a Dark Energy, start piling over another Evital? Because what he could do is maybe a wide cycle in this turn and uh, just try to get two Evitals ready to go and just two shots that's going to end their break. Now he could use Zork Break to a uh, Mind Jack for three, six, seven, but that doesn't help two shot and then your opponent can just giant water strike and knock it out because that burst balloon will hit it for 60. so if i'm brandon i might retreat to a another pokemon and tackle that instead so we see sycamore discard his hand draw seven new cards he'd unfortunately not find he, uh, uh lysander that turn but he does have a dark energy so he can dark energy the other evil tall yucks free retreat to the evil tall yucks Y cyclone to the bench and then maybe be okay that way I know you're taking energies off for Evitol. Uh, if that's a DC, he could attach it to the bench and still go for the Y cycle play. Because I think powering up two Evitols is probably the correct play right now, especially since Taylor. It doesn't have anything. So we'll see a DC to the Shaman, and what he's going to do is retreat, Sky Return to the Evitol. Oh, I th oh man, I thought, th thought he was going to send the Evitol with the uh, the no, no fighting fear belt or anything on it. Uh, so Taylor does find a splash energy, and she's going to play the end, putting Brandon down to four. Now, if Brandon does decide to evolve this turn, he's going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. He finds a DC, 130, which is still not enough for a knockout. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, 130. If that's if Taylor does pick up that splash energy with the Moonlight Slash. If she does not pick up Moonlight Slash, then Brandon can take a knockout and do 150, bringing that Greninja break up to 180 instead of 160. So both players are going to shuffle up. All right, Taylor once again does not find any. Well, she does find a Dive Ball, uh, so she can Dive Ball for another Frogadier. Uh, she has a Froki in her hand, but she needs to play a second Super Rod. If she does not play a second Super Rod, she is going to be in trouble. Now, she does have a Froki in her hand, so what she could do is put down the Froki, um, and just mm, Moonlight S Slash for 80? Not, and, I mean, 60 and not pick up the energy? Uh, but even then, it's so bad. Like, it, she's going to be in a bad situation either way. I, if, if she doesn't play the second Super Rod, you got to think Brandon's in total control. Now, she does have the Echo Arm, uh, the Froakie. Let's we'll see the Froakie come down. She does have a Trainer's Mode. She's going to play that like a top cards of her deck. There's an N and a Via Seeker. I think if you're Taylor, you just grab the v, the N and just save the Via Seeker for later on. Um, yeah, because she's not taking a knockout anytime soon. She can... So she can sh Shadow Stitch... Or 40, and make it where if, if Zorak takes uh, mind jacks you, it gets knocked out. If she does, if he, Brandon decides to do that, and she's gonna go for the Moonlight Slash for uh, for 80 instead. Okay, so up to 80 damage, and can Brandon find a way to knock out this Greninja break? If he finds a DC to Max Luxor, he can do it. Uh, let's see, I see a Dark Energy, I see an Escape Rope. So Brandon can Escape Rope this turn and knock out a Pokemon on the bench, except for Talonflame. Talonflame, he cannot knock out currently. Which is very unfortunate. Now, what he could do is escape rope, send the Evitol, 
stand in with Zork and they retreat to the Evatol on the bench, which is a very complicated play, but it could pay off in the long run. Uh, so we see Brandon does have a Shaman in his hand, so I see Ulch Ball. He could discard the Dark and whatever that card next to the Dark is. And let's see, does he have a Life Sender in hand? Uh, he, he could maybe go for the DC play. DC and a Dark will take a knockout. A DC and a Max Luxor, sorry, but he's already played three Max Luxors, so there might only be one left in his deck. Um, I wonder what Brandon's going to decide to do. Uh, so there's Ultra Ball discarding an Escape Rope and a Dark Energy, okay. And let's see, can he find another Zora? If he finds a second Zora, he might be in good shape. Does have, oh, he does have a Max Luxor in the deck as well. So let's see what he decides to get out. There's a Zora, okay. Now, the only thing you have to be scared of is Taylor Ken Giant Water Shuriken for knockout. But if you Giant Water Shuriken to Zora, she's not hitting it as an Evitol, which is fine as well. Okay, so I'm getting a good shuffle. And can Brandon find a DCE and a Max Luxor this turn? So we'll see a shame coming down, set up for four. I wonder why he didn't put down the uh, Zora first. But there's a DCE. He could put that on the bench, Evitol X. If he finds a Max Luxor, he could then take a knockout on this Greninja break. Uh, but he will get popped for 60, but there's no way Taylor can respond ASAP to knock out that Evatol X. So, we'll see a DCE. Let's see, where does he decide to put it at? Uh, does he put on the... Oh, he's going to put on the Shaman. Go for another Sky Return. Alright, so DCE, retreat to Shaman. And we'll see a Sky Return. And I hope he promotes the Evatol without the... Uh, actually, I don't know who you promote here. He didn't put down the other Zora. Which makes things very interesting now because Taylor can just giant water shirk in the bench Zorak for knockout. Uh, Taylor does have an end. Yeah, if I was Brandon, I might have put down the other Zora just so in case Taylor does decide to water shirk in your bench Zorak, you can still uh, stand in. So we see a splash going to go into the active. We'll see an Echo Arm shuffling back in two balloons. I think that's all she has in there. It's up to three, but there's only two in there if I remember correctly. I think it's up to three. If I, I think I'm right. I could be wrong, but I think it's, I think it's up to three. All right, so gonna get a good shuffle, and uh, let's see. Taylor's most likely gonna play the end, saying, "Hey, you're not gonna have the DC on your, your Evatol for your Evatol anymore." And uh, yeah, we're gonna see it in. Oh, she doesn't see how many cards left in Brandon's hand, but oh, she's gonna go for Sycamore set. Discard her hand, draw seven new cards. Can she find another Greninja or not? There's a Jirachi, a Bursty Balloon. A fisherman and no water energy, so no giant water shuriken is happening this turn, unfortunately. So a burst will go into the active. Now she does have a Jirachi, which is going to make Brandon a little bit weird, uh, because if he does put the DC on the on the Evatol, Taylor can then maybe start us to discard the DC and make it immune for a turn. So we'll probably see a Moonlight. S I mean, uh, if I'm Taylor, I'd actually Shadow Stitching for forty. Just to keep the Evatol in the X spot and make it harder for Brandon to retreat. And that way, if Brandon does take a knockout, yeah, that Greninja Break gets returned back into your hand. So if I'm Taylor, I think that's Shadow Stitching for 40. Maybe keep the, keep the Evatol stuck in the X spot because it does it can't retreat as of right now. It needs a DC or a Floatstone. And uh, let's see, does she do that or not? Or does she go for the Moonlight Slash to do more damage? And it looks like she is going to go for the Moonlight Slash for 60. Now Brandon can just like stand in, retreat, put a DC on uh, Evatol, take a knockout. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, that DC is like very unnecessary. Uh, he didn't need the DC to knock out this Greninja Break. He could have taken a knockout anyway, doing 100 damage. There's an E-Hammer discarding the Splash Energy. And we'll see. Okay, that's why he put the DC on the active. Now that, uh, that takes a knockout. So, we'll see, uh, Eve Ball for the knockout, it's, yeah, 60 HP left, or 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 120, plus the fighting free build, is, uh, yeah, enough for the knockout. Does take 60 from the Burst Balloon, but none of that Greninja stuff gets returned back into Taylor's hand. Now, if you're Taylor, you do have the Jirachi, so you could go for the Stardust this turn, like, put it down, and then in, uh, try to draw into a Water Energy. Just start as that DC off and make your Jirachi immune, immune, which is very cute. So let's see Burst Balloon going to the Frogadier. We'll see, hopefully the Jirachi being dropped. So there's a Jirachi, and we'll probably see a V-Sticker for it in, unless, uh, yeah, it's fine. I was going to say maybe H-Trainer, but H-Trainer essentially does the same thing. So we see a V stick your Ford in. Uh, both players are gonna shuffle. Oh no, a Sycamore. She's gonna Sycamore discard her hand draw seven to car. She is just digging. She wants to hit a one energy. 
And there is no water energy. Oh, there, there is one water energy, okay? So she gets one water energy. Um, the, now the question is, does she play a second super rod? There's two frogadiers in the discard pile. One of the fields, and that is it right now. We see a uh, dive ball. There's no other frogadiers in the deck. Uh, we know she prized one. We know she has two in the discard pile. And I do not see a second super rod in that deck either. If this frogadier goes down, that is going to be game. And there's nothing Taylor can do. She has no other super rod. She doesn't play Brock's Grit. She doesn't play Karen or anything like that. Oh, no. So she does have a Greninja. Um... She's doing the math to see can Greninja, can Evotol take a knock on her Greninja or not. I think you would evolve into Greninja either way. Just to try to uh, put some pre like, just try to get a Greninja breakout next turn. And what she could do right now is put a Water Jewel at Jirachi, retreat at Stardust. I think that's the correct play. You get the DC off the Evotol and then making your uh, Jirachi immune while taking energy off the field, which is great. So see Jirachi, going to see that Stardust discarding a DC off the active. Okay, alright, so uh, there's Stardust for 10, that DC does get discarded, and on a Brandis turn, does he have a Lysander? If he does have a Lysander, I would probably bring up the Froakie and just take a knock on it while you can. Uh, okay, so Brandon's going to draw a card, he does have a Max Elixir, so what he can do is stand in Max Elixir, he does have DC as well, but he's going to put DC in the active. Which is very interesting because you know that Jirachi's sitting there. Unless he has a Ranger. Ooh, if he has a Ranger, he can uh, take a knockout this turn. Oh, that Jirachi just saying, hey, get rid of that status, that effect. Saying you can't do anything. Okay. So, Max looks like going to put a Dark Energy on the bench, even all EX. Um, or does he have a, a Lysander? If he has a Lysander, he can Lysander the Froki. Why Cyclone it for a knockout? While putting the DC on the bench, and we see a uh, frog, uh, the Greninja break coming up, and we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, 130 knocking out that Greninja. Oh no! And you were Taylor, and you gotta think that's game. You have no more uh, Frogadiers left. She top six a Greninja. Her hands like Ranger, Lysander, Greninja, and this just happens in Greninja. Like you just, your hand becomes bad. You cl it clunks up. So we're gonna see a treat instead of Froki or instead of the Jirachi. We're gonna see another Stardust. But, I mean, does it matter? Like, Taylor doesn't have any more Frogadiers left. She doesn't have, um, I don't think she has another Super Rod left either. T uh, Brandon just topped up a VS Seeker, so now he can VS Seeker, bring up that Froki, take a knock on as well if he wants to do that. So, first on to the Evital EX. We'll probably see a VS Seeker for Lysander, bring up that Froki, just to take a knockout, and just, just make it where Taylor does not have any chance of getting a Frog out the following turn. Uh, let's see what he decides to do here. And if he does, that goes on one prize card as well. So he's going to... I know it looks confusing that he's retreating, but he's he's standing in, retreating, and then passing on to Taylor. I think he should have a license to Froki. Taylor does have a license to bring up the Zark now with the uh, DCE. And she's going to start us again to get another DC off the field and do another 10 damage to that Zark, which still is not knocked out. has 90 damage on it. And uh, let's see, will Brandon license that Froki? Uh, if he licensed the Froki, she has no way to get frogs out. And I think that's pretty much game over. So let's see, does he license or does he just pass? He's going to retreat, retreat into the Evil Tall with the Flowstone again. Okay, and a pass on the Taylors. Uh, Taylor's going to talk to a Greninja break. But, I mean, what can Taylor do now? She has a Burst Balloon. She can Burst Balloon the Jirachi. And Brandon down to... Uh, or Ace Trainer Brandon down to three, and then maybe Arrow Blitz for forty. Like you, you can't give up, right? There's no way you give up. You got to try your best. This is the last round. If Taylor somehow can uh, squeak out a tie, I think she wins, or she she uh, gets first place overall, if I remember correctly. Uh, but both players are going to shuffle up. Uh, Brandon's going to get. Three, Taylor's going to get six, okay? Uh, six cards going to Taylor's hand. She's got a Water Energy on the Town Flame. She's going to treat and go for an Arrow Blitz for 40. Okie dokie. So Arrow Blitz for 40, so 12, 13, 14. I mean, the bench, even Tall X can't take a, uh, can swing at the Town Flame. But it's not going to knock out immediately. One, two, three. Yeah, it's not going to knock out immediately. 
And if Brandon had only played the license to bring in that Froki, this would have been a, like he would have one prize card left and almost win. But Taylor's gonna look at her deck, see what's all in there, realize there's no super odd, there's no. I mean, I don't know what she could do right now. She got Via Seeker and something else. I'm not sure what the other card was. Uh, but all Brandon's kind of do is swing. You just keep swinging. Uh, maybe swing with the new Evatol. That is just a fighting fear belt with no damage on it, so it can hit the, it can take a burst balloon hit. Brandon does have a Via Seeker, so he can Via Seeker bring up the Jirachi that he's so scared about. Take a knock on it that way. Uh, you can put a Dark Energy there. Via Seeker for a Lysander, most likely. Uh, he's gonna look through his discard pile. I think you go for Lysander no matter what. Looks like he is trying to contemplate a second more play. Uh, but he has no max elixir left. He's already attached to Dark Return, so he can't he can't knock out this Tile Flame. I just I just I would just discard I would just knock out the Jirachi or knock out the Froki. You just want to take the threats off the field instead of just passing. So we see a Lysander going uh to the top of the deck, which means he is gonna verse seeker for a Lysander. Bring up either Jirachi or Froki. I wonder which one he'll decide to do. So via seeker for a Lysander, bring up the Jirachi. Uh, retreat to the Eve Tall EX, and he will go for an Eve Ball for the knockout. And uh, let's see what is going to happen. Can Brandon find another Via Seeker <coughs> to knock out that bench Froki? All right, so Taylor's going to draw Splash Energy. She's got a Burst Balloon on the active. She can Via Seeker for N. Er, oh, wait, the other Balloon got discarded from last turn. So Balloon on the active. We'll see a Via Seeker for a Lysander. Bring up the Zorg, and she will take a knockout with the Arrow Blitz, uh, taking a price card, uh, getting, I don't know what that is. Uh, so we see a Reverse Flag coming down from Taylor, or from Brandon, okay. And let's see, Brandon could go for an N. I mean, if he, do you go for an N? Uh, so Dark Energy Active, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, he'll do the, uh, the Eve Ball for the knockout. Does 130 damage. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And a Fighting Fury Belt to Reverse Valley. Uh, whatever. He, he he has enough damage on the field. And Brandon will take the game. Uh, it looks like Taylor did not play a second Super Rod. Only that one. So once the one Super Rod was played, it was gone forever. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this Memphis Elite Challenge round number four. Uh, Brandon does win the whole tournament and taking his first Elite Challenge victory uh, this season, which is fantastic. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye. All right, guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, Six Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.